GT Academy, the world's only competition where bedroom gamers are transformed into real-life motor racing drivers. GT Academy is uh, my only chance to become a, a professional race driver. From millions of Gran Turismo gamers across Europe, the fastest 144 made it to national finals, with just 12 selected for race camp. This is my biggest dream to become a real racing driver. Here they experience the toughest fight of their lives as they strive to impress head judge and Formula One legend Eddie Irvine. Man, motor racing got to be a The prize to race for real in the world's toughest endurance race, the Dubai 24 Hour. I want to win this competition. From virtual gamer to real life racing driver, this is GT Academy. Before we get to race camp at Silverstone, our 12 gamers are brought to Le Mans, France, where they'll get to taste the life of a professional race driver. In just one week, all this will be in the grasp of one gamer. The Le Mans 24 Hours, the world's most famous endurance race, where dreams are made and brutally broken. As the teams make their final preparations, our gamers soak up the atmosphere in the paddocks. I want to do it. I want to do this. I want to be a racing driver. It's unbelievable. I have no words for it. It's just so crazy. We're in the, in the grid of Le Mans 24 and yeah, it's, this is just the start. It's really important to show the guys the just what the, the atmosphere and the pressure is like. This is, this is very, I, I come back and use the word real. This is real. We're not faking this, we're not bluffing this. This is the biggest motor race in the world. And the winner of the 2008 GT Academy is sitting on pole position in the LMP2 class. And he has to cope with this pressure. And it's this challenge that back in 2008, a young Spanish student called Lucas Ordonez took head on as he won the very first GT Academy. Over the next two years, Lucas grasped this chance, racing with a professional Nissan team, and now sits in pole position for the Le Mans 24 hours. Many people believed it would be impossible for a gamer to achieve so much so quickly. Lucas has blown the skeptics away and sets the standard for the next generation of gamers. I, I hope that, uh, that I can do this in the future, but uh, with my passion and with, uh, with my heart, uh, I, I try to do the best. As the race continues, our 12 contestants head for their first challenge. The starting point of many racing drivers' careers. The first challenge this evening will be karting around the Piste Alain Prost. This will be the judges' first chance to see the drivers' raw talent. It is also a chance for the drivers to work as a team. Communication will play an important role in the endurance kart race. So we thought it'd be traditional to do a uh, Le Mans start where the karts start on one side of the track and the drivers start on the other. Cool being at Le Mans um, and running something that goes into darkness, it kind of encapsulates the spirit of it all. While the gamers compete in their first challenge, former GT Academy winner Lucas Ordonez storms through the field in his first Le Mans. It's been very interesting watching the nature of the relationships between the drivers. Perhaps some relationships becoming stronger and some starting to drift apart. We qualified in second. I broke the card uh, in 45 minutes. I came in in second, uh, second place. But now we're in fifth. Uh, 
Edwin lost three places. It's too bad. Not fast enough. Maybe it's his weight or maybe, yeah, I don't know. He's not fast enough. But... It's great. I love this teamwork stuff. It's really good. It's another, you know, another twist, another element that's, you know, an added challenge. My name's James Hudson. Uh, I'm here representing the UK. I came into this competition just looking to, to fulfill my dream. My motivation is just to do my absolute best and show them that, you know, given the opportunities, I can be the best on, on any given day. So with about 15 minutes of the race remaining, the Italians prop up the field, the featherweight French team are at the head of the field, and everybody else is separated by handkerchief. It was hard work, hard work. And it's the French who take the all-important victory. It's a great beginning for the competition. Uh, we hope to, to continue on this way. We didn't take them to Le Mans to go go-karting. We took them to Le Mans to show them just the, the value of the ultimate prize. It was the, the ultimate bag of cash. It was the golden carrot. With the pro race still going on, the gamers face an early wake-up call. After the national final, you'd expect a nice hotel, but the campsite <laughs> is something different. Uneventful, aside from the noise. Kind of interesting being woken up every five minutes by some of the loudest cars I've ever heard. Morning, gentlemen. For the uh, next activity, going to need your passports. As you can hear, the race is still going on. We're going to leave, we're going to head back to race camp at Silverstone. So, jump in your cars, please. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All set to go. They start off on their 280 mile journey to Silverstone. Welcome to Silverstone, the home of the British Grand Prix and one of the most famous racecourses in the world. Its iconic corners are responsible for making and breaking many a world championship. Okay, gentlemen, warm welcome to your base camp. This is gonna be your home for the next week. We're located right in the heart of the action. Pool table and some football. Wow. It's just like in the army, I think. <laughs> Very hard, but it's better than the Mars, so uh, no problem. But before the gamers have a chance to settle in, it's time to meet the man the gamers have to impress. Nineteen years as a professional racer. This man has seen it and done it all. Formula One legend and renowned straight talker, Eddie Irvine. It is his task as head judge to select just one gamer who will win the life-changing experience. Gentlemen, welcome to GT Academy. This is your opportunity to be a professional racing driver. We're going to try and take you from virtual to reality. Don't mess it up. Welcome back to GT Academy, the most intensive racing competition in the world. Twelve of the fastest PlayStation gamers compete in challenges over a week at Silverstone. But only one driver will get to fulfill their dream and the chance to race for real with the pro team in the Dubai 24 hours. To get there, the winner of GT Academy will not only need to be a great driver, they'll also need to be physically fit and mentally strong. This is where our next challenge comes in. You sure your trousers, your combats go on your legs. Your Hurry up! Hurry up! Need to Hurry up. Oh, no, come on! White vest, have you got a white vest? Okay, starting the 
you, get yourself off the bus. Hey, you, bus, look at the floor. Go, get over there. So good morning guys, I hope you enjoyed your rather rude awakening. Um, we brought you here today for a not only a physically a tough workout, but a mental workout as well. To be a top racing driver, not only do you need to be physically fit, you need to be mentally strong as well. So we're going to see today whether you've got what it takes. My name is Rob Blair and I'm a fitness specialist and my role here is going to be getting these guys to a certain level, physically and mentally. If I can wean out the sick, the frail and the mentally inadequate, I'm just looking at them all, looking at me now. We're about to lose Bye. Alex. Unable to take any more, Alex pulls out and is shortly followed by both UK contestants with serious leg injuries. Things are not looking good for the German and British team this early in the challenge. With the warm-up over, it's now time for the real pain to begin for the rest of the gamers. With a gruelling race across five miles of wet, muddy terrain, this specially designed course will push gamers to their very limit. The remaining gamers will have to support their teammates if they want to finish. Four, three, two, one, go! I think what's going through the lads' minds today is just getting round in one piece. And of course they want the prize, but self-preservation I think is even more powerful. There's a hole in the ground over there and uh, I missed it and I made a barrel roll. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, but my knee hurts. I'm devastated, really. Yeah. With one German and one Dutch out of the competition already, Sasha and Edwin surprisingly team up to help each other to the finish line. Are you okay? Yeah. Come on. I'm Sasha Malmok and I'm representing Team Germany in the GT Academy. I was a professional mountain bike racer for almost 20 years. BMX racer also. And I was quite good in mountain bike sport already, but this is just a step to the next level. You do not throw up on the finish line. You have not tried hard enough. <laughs> Their tactics pay off as the newly formed team of Sasha and Edwin come in first. They're closely followed by Danilo and Federico of Team Italy. The strong-looking French team consisting of Thibaut and Bastien come third and last are Carlos and Bruno from Spain and Portugal who were just relieved to finish. We arrived there and we knew this is going to kill us. This is going to kill us and it was like this. Like the first half an hour we were like, come on, this is not possible. I'm very motivated to win so uh, yeah, my mind pushed my body to go further and I made it. I wasn't able to finish it because I misjudged the jump and ended up in a hole in the ground. Today was very tough for me because uh, I was the first person who uh, retired because um, I'm not that fit. To hold the press up position was not possible after a few times. About five minutes after my knee gave out today, he managed to tear a hamstring. So, no, we're really not in the best, uh, best shape as far as the injuries go. And, you know, we're both just trying to look after ourselves and hoping that, you know, we can pull it together for the rest of the physical challenges that lie ahead. With the assault course done, our gamers are beginning to realise that GT Academy is not a walk in the park and they're going to need all their strength and determination to stay in the competition. With eliminations looming and some of our gamers injured, they're going to need all the help they can get. During their stay at Silverstone, each national team will be mentored by one of the world's top racing drivers. Looking after Team Italy will be current Formula One star Vitantonio Liuzzi. Heading up the German team is Sabine Schmitz, 
the queen of the Nürburgring. Franck Mayer, the Signatech LMP2 racer, is supporting the French team. The Dutch team mentor is multiple Le Mans winner, Jerome Bleekemorlen. Team Spain and Portugal will be getting sound advice from Le Mans racer and GT Academy winner, Lucas Ordonez. And Johnny Herbert is mentoring the great British team. He's had multiple Formula One wins and is also a Le Mans series winner. Yeah, when I met the German team first, um I had two different people, very different people. One is very tall and one is medium, <laughs> but, but they are a good team together. I, I'm very proud of them. Yeah, here my role is to encourage them, of course, but to give them as many advice about driving style, about driving techniques, and to make them confident in their abilities. It's been a nice feeling to see some unexperienced guy in this world getting ready for this challenge. Really exciting. The mentors get straight to work as the gamers prepare for their first track challenge. So our first driving challenge today will be a benchmark test. The gamers will get one lap of the Stowe circuit to lay down a lap time. This will be the gamers' first chance to test a fully race-tuned car. The individual times will set a benchmark and the mentors will be looking for a big improvement over the week. Today's the morning after the um, salt course and it's very interesting to see the, the state of the guys. But the two guys that I sort of noticed have made almost biblical recoveries overnight. I think there may have been a miracle in Northampton. And the two guys that dropped out very early through quite serious injuries. No, not even a whiff of a limp. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better, a lot more um, confident now. Um, my legs are a lot better, so I'm um, looking forward to this challenge. Let's get it on. Yeah, I'm absolutely, you know, the, the one thing I can't wait to do here is get in a car. Um, I need to show these guys what I can do behind the wheel. Um, I need to show them that I'm quick. I need to show them that my car control is, you know, second to none when it comes to the guys who are here competing. As individuals, it, it comes across that James is the one who's got sort of the most confidence and he's the one who knows what to do and how to do it, when to do it and everything else. And as I said, it's a bit, bit sort of over the top. Jan is more quiet but it's just starting to sort of sparkle that he's got some one determination. He's, secondly, he's got some positivity about what he wants to do and how he needs to do it. it we, we still haven't seen really the, the true Jan. Hi, I'm Jan Mardenborough. I'm representing the UK and GT Academy. If I win GT Academy, yeah, it would be a life-changing experience to race in the Dubai 24-hour race. You'd mean that. Um, as a child, thinking, can I be a racing driver when I'm 80 years old? Um, to finally achieve your goal is a, a fulfilling experience. Sasha, down the mountain biker, he did the best lap from, from everybody. How do you feel? Are you happy with the car? Everything all right? Uh, happy with the car, yes, but the lap was not as good as I thought because I hit the cone, so... Uh, yeah, that's not good to hit the cone. Yeah. They were a bit too relaxed, they just wanted to think to go things to go slowly and smoothly, but uh, now they realize they have to push hard if they want to win these concerts. Well, I'm trying to give them some pointers uh, how to drive, how to prepare for, for a couple of things. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hard for them because they don't have a lot of experience. Uh, in the end, they did about the same time, so uh, probably their, their skills are quite the same at the moment. But I think uh, if they work harder, if they focus more on the driving, it could be even better. Sasha gets the best lap time, immediately impressing the judges. The Italians have a lot of work to do in the coming days if they want to make it to the final race. As the day draws to a close, head judge Eddie Irvine and head of driving Rob Barth meet to discuss the gamers' progress. So we've done two driving challenges and we did some fitness yesterday. Um, the driving took, uh, took place in France with the karting and then we did the benchmark on the Stowe circuit this morning. The thing I like about Sash is he's gone off to America, he's done the mountain biking, that shows he's driven and he, he wants to make something of his life. So James does talk a lot. Mansell used to talk a lot and he didn't talk a lot of sense, but he could drive and he, uh, he won the World Championship. Jan, 
from Cardiff, not from the most privileged of backgrounds. This is a great opportunity for him. How's he been reacting to that? Interesting looking at the instructor's comments. He's learning from his mistakes, so again, I have to keep an eye on him. Thibaut is the third of the Lacombe family to come to us at GT Academy. He's physically sort of lean and fit, looks like a racing driver. That's good for him. So we've got clear leaders, they're top, and clear last. Well, I think we need to give these guys a bit of a wake-up call. Eddie calls the gamers in to hear the news. So it's come to that time where you're in front of me and the big man. Well, for me, obviously, without talent, you're going nowhere. But you also got to want it. There's lots of guys racing the lower formulas that were very, very talented, but they didn't push hard enough and they didn't want it hard enough. And you got to be lucky. There's lots of good drivers out there that are talented, that push hard, but for whatever reason, they're just unlucky and, you, you know, they're useless. So we have a leaderboard made up of results from the karting at Le Mans, the results from the benchmark test this morning, and we've also taken into consideration attitude points from the SAS training yesterday. So with second position this morning and victory in France, Team France, congratulations, you're at the top of our leaderboard. But with two performances, leaving them with a lot of work to do, Team Italy, you're at the foot of the leaderboard. And the penalty is going to be sleeping in the truck tonight, which is something a lot of drivers did at the very beginning of the career. Because every two nights you'd sleep in the truck, you could buy yourself a new set of tyres. It was more important to have a new set of tyres. You'll also be starting tomorrow morning's physical activity with a five second penalty. Team France are sitting pretty at the top of the leaderboard. The Italians, with their five-second penalty, will really have to step up their game and prove to the judges they want to win this, as all the teams continue to battle to win GT Academy and the ultimate prize of racing in the Dubai 24 hours. Good night. Good night. Good night. This is our interpretation of a triathlon. There's no excuse for failing to prepare. 